All right, what's happening guys? Today we are doing a what's on my iPhone video. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for the types of app I use, whether it's for Instagram or Twitter or Snapchat or whatever. So I'm just gonna give you guys a quick run through, nothing too crazy. I'm not a huge fan of like using my phone a ton just because I like to focus on other things and be productive, whether it's on my laptop or notes or whatever it is. All right, so first off, I really like to have my own backgrounds as my own wallpapers. I just think it's a way for me to be unique and have, you know, not the generic iPhone backgrounds, but a picture that I've actually taken. So right now, it's just this really cool um, Eiffel Tower picture. All right, so on the very first page, I just keep a very simple layout. You know, it's all mostly um, basic default Apple apps, nothing too crazy. And then on my bottom row, I like to have my messages, my Safari, my Spotify, and then my Snapchat. I think those are the most four apps that I use probably every day, whether it's gonna be for you know texting or listening to music or just doing a quick web search. These are the biggest apps that I use. And then on my second page are kind of where I keep everything else. So in my top left corner, I have my Gmail app. I actually really hate the default mail app. I don't think it looks good. I don't think it's very intuitive or anything like that. So with my Gmail, I have both my accounts, my school one and then my personal account. And I think it just looks a lot better. It's really easy to organize and then it's super intuitive to switch between them. So I'm not a huge fan of having all my apps out, so I like to keep them kind of organized by folders. So in my first folder, I just have my socials where it's gonna be Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Venmo. I have GroupMe, I have Kakatop, which is just another messaging app, and then something called the YouTube Studio, which I'll go into really quick. But if you are a YouTuber or a content creator and you have your videos online, this app makes it really easy to check all your analytics, check your subscribers, look at the comments. So I just use this really quick. Whenever I upload a video, I can go into my comments, see the most recent comment, and then um, reply to it. And it just helps me, you know, stay connected with you guys. And then at the same time, like keep track of the analytics of my subscribers and my watch time and things like that. So that being said, I do read all my comments and I really love seeing what you guys have to say about my video. So, you know, if this video has been helpful or anything else, like just leave it down below and I promise that I'll read it. Twitter, I'm kind of active. I haven't been as active lately, but I'm trying to get back into it. So, you know, definitely give me a follow at Nicholas Che. I think it's just a great place to keep up with the news that's going on or politics or like funny memes. I think there's so many funny tweets that are out there. And then in the next folder, I have my photo and video apps that I use. I don't use all of these every single day but they are useful to have like google photos i love google photos i use it more than dropbox because i think that dropbox is terribly laid out it doesn't sync well with your phone but with my google photos i have it so it automatically backs up everything so i'm able to easily go in and then see all the pictures literally from way back until like 2000 probably like 14 or 15 and it's just really simple you can look up faces you can look up locations that you've been to and then something called Tiny Scanner, it just scans your PDFs. I think that like when you're in college, you need to be scanning documents really quickly. You don't want to go to an actual scanner when you can just do it from the phone and then it'll automatically scan it for you. And then the next folder are just everything I'm going to need for Princeton. So a Princeton app, Blackboard, which is what we use to check announcements or grades. And then something called Tiger Menus, which is actually a Princeton made app and it just goes through each of the residential colleges and shows you what's on the menu for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. This is actually an app I use a lot when I'm back on campus because when I'm with my friends, we're like, where do you guys want to go eat? Let's just check the app and then we can figure out where to go. In my music folder, I have something called Tonal Energy Tuner, which is a tuner and a metronome. As you guys know, I am a musician, so having a metronome and a tuner is super important. I think that this app is the best one to do it. It's like $5, but it's been totally worth it. And then something called guitar tabs. I am a guitar player, so when I need to look up chords real quick or want to learn how to play a song, I just pull up this app and then look at the chords. And then finally, SoundCloud. I don't use SoundCloud a ton because I'm more of a Spotify guy, but the only, literally the only reason that I have SoundCloud on my phone is because Acid Rap isn't anywhere else, and I love Chance the Rapper's first album, Acid Rap. In a folder I call Productivity, is just a bunch of Google apps, so Google Calendar. To be honest, I actually use a native Apple Calendar more than my Google Calendar, just because I think it's more seamless. I like having the actual apps on my desktop and on my phone. So I don't use Google Calendar a ton, but I do use Google Drive and Google Docs on a daily basis. So Google Drive is just where I keep a bunch of my documents, um, presentations, things like that. Things that I know are gonna be needed to be backed up. So I use it on my computer all the time and then if I need to access it from my phone to check a document really quick. And then something called Gboard. Now, if you don't have Gboard, I highly recommend it. It has actually 
really, really changed the way I type and I use it on a daily single basis. I think it's just really intuitive. I think my favorite feature is the swiping feature. So all you have to do is just literally swipe over the keyboard. I know a lot of Android users have had this for a long time. To be honest, it really doesn't mess up that often. And since I have the iPhone 7 Plus and my hands are kind of small, I like to be able to swipe instead of having to reach all the way over to the keyboard. It's also really great because you can actually search for emojis if you need to do something really quick like a car or something. You can search it and then it's, it pops right up. Or you can also look up things like GIFs, which I think is super funny. I love sending just random GIFs to people. Um, you can even draw, send random emoticons, things like that. So yeah, Gboard is a must have for any iPhone user. In my shopping folder, I don't do too much online shopping, but when I do, I think that Amazon is probably the place where I do most of it, just when I need to pick up something really quick. I actually really enjoy the Amazon app. I think that if I need something on the go I, and I don't want to log into my computer, I can just literally search for it, put in the address, and then it's automatically shipped there. And since I am a college student, I have the Prime discount, which I love. I love a lot of Amazon products lately. Like I have the Fire TV stick, I have the Echo Dot, and those two work very seamlessly and they're really well integrated into my daily life. And then things like eBay, if I need to pick up something used or, you know, my PayPal business account. Okay, and then just kind of like this miscellaneous folder. I don't use any of these apps too much, like my Chase bank account, my United Airlines app, um, something called Waze, which is an alternative to Google Maps and the native Apple Maps. I use this if there's going to be a lot of traffic because Waze is actually a really nice app to use because anyone else that has an app can report accidents or cops or just any type of thing that's gonna that could happen while you're driving and then this is kind of a transportation folder so like google maps uber lyft android transit which is an app i use whenever i need to get to new york i just buy my tickets on the app and then show it to the conductor and then in my travel folder these are the apps that i've been using more and more recently since i am abroad something called whatsapp if you probably know it but it's just another messaging app and it's really easy to message internationally and then another app that I've been using a ton is Google Translate if I needed to look up just some basic vocab words that I forgot or don't know how to say. To be honest, Google Translate isn't actually the best app when it comes to translating because when you put in full sentences, it'll butcher a lot of things. Like it's not gonna be how the natives say it. So I don't recommend using it for a ton of things, but if you do need to look up some basic vocab words, um, it's really handy. And then the new tile I got also comes with an app. So if I need to find my backpack, since I have the tile in it, it will pop up with a map of where that backpack is. So since I'm since the backpack is in the house right now, it's obviously right here. Okay, and the apps that I actually use kind of on a daily consistent basis now are three of them, Viesco, Unfold, and Better. So just the workflow, if you guys have seen some of my stories lately, if you don't follow me, definitely go check out my Instagram page. I've been posting a lot more pictures and content out there lately, at Nicholas Che. I'm trying to hit 5,000 followers pretty soon, so please go give me a follow if you enjoy my content. Viesco is obviously just an editing app. I like to import my pictures, and then I actually bought a bunch of the presets a long time ago when I was using Viesco to edit most of my pictures but I like it because it gives it this old film look I love the colors and the different ways that you can um, adjust your photos it has a lot of features that the native photos app doesn't have so you can adjust contrast you can adjust saturation you know even the fade or the um, things like shadows and split toning and highlights which not a lot of iPhone apps have right now and then once I'm done editing a picture I like to save it and then import it into something called Unfold. Now, if you haven't heard of Unfold, it's a brand new app and it's how I like to post most of my stories. So when I go into this, there's a bunch of different templates and layouts, some of which I have purchased, some of which are free, but it just makes posting your Instagram stories way more aesthetic. So if I tap something new, I can just do a basic thing and then import a picture. You can even add text and you can customize it to just make your Instagram stories look way more aesthetic. I think that having a nice Instagram story to look at makes your feed more appealing, allows you to upload more pictures. So as a photographer from a shoot, I obviously have like 30 or 40 photos, but I'm not going to post every single one of them on my main feed. So the Instagram stories is a great way for me to continue uploading um, other pictures that wouldn't have been seen. And then another app which I recently found is actually called Better. And essentially it just manages your Instagram account for you. But it, basically what I mean by that is you can upload pictures and then it'll show you what it looks like on your grid. So right now I just have a bunch of different pictures loaded so I can see what is gonna fit my aesthetic the best, what's gonna look the best in the current feed that I have. And the really cool feature is you can actually add a time. So you can schedule with a caption, your first comment, you can tag people and the location, and then you can 
schedule a certain time for it to post and it'll post it for you automatically. Now, in order to actually schedule the post, I think it's a subscription service. I haven't actually paid for it. I just use it to um, check out the feed and see what photos I'm gonna post and then just do it manually. And then obviously the main apps that I use are things like Spotify. I actually really enjoy my daily mixes. Sometimes they're hits, sometimes they're misses, but you know, it just kind of curates the best playlist for you based on the music that you've been listening to. Now, whether I use Spotify or Apple Music, I actually have both because my family has both, but I'm not a huge fan of Apple Music just because I don't think that it's very intuitive. It's hard to find certain albums. It's hard to like navigate between the tabs and, and maybe that's because I haven't used it a ton, but I just feel like Spotify looks better. I do like how you can interact with your Facebook friends and see what they're listening to. And then another really cool feature is that you can seamlessly integrate between your phone and your computer. Now how this works is if I start playing a song on my phone, I can easily go into my computer and start and switch it to li start listening from the, the computer. I'm a, need a second. So right now it's on my computer. Now it's on my phone, which is connected to the speaker. And then obviously Snapchat, which I just use to keep up with my friends. I'm actually not a big fan of the new stories feature which came out a few months ago. I think it's, you know, not very easy to look at. So yeah, that about wraps up what's on my iPhone. It's not nothing too crazy. I'm not a huge fan of just having a bunch of apps just to have apps. I do have the iPhone 7 Plus in the 128 gigabyte version, which I think was a great investment because having 128 gigabytes allows me to just take so many photos that I don't have to worry about deleting them every single time. Or if I need to download a new app or want to download a Spotify playlist, I don't have to worry about, oh, I'm not going to have storage and start having to delete stuff. You know, I used to be on the 16 gigs or the 32 gigs, but once I started getting more and more into photography, having a lot of photos was really important to me, especially like long form videos. I'm able to record 30 minutes to even an hour of footage without having to worry about having enough footage. Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this content, please make sure you give it a like, comment down below, and subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you guys next time. Every night fucks every day up. Every day patches the night up. On God, you should...